Hi there everyone and welcome to this video where we're looking at examples on how to simplify SIDS. So, uh, and this is without using your calculator of course, because doing it with a calculator is very easy, that's great for work. Uh, however, to do this without a calculator takes a little bit more uh, effort and I just want to show you how to do that. Now, if I wanted to add any two expressions, they have to be of the same kind. Okay, so for example, I have to add negative 2x plus 5y. I can't add that because of the x's and y's that's not the same. So here I've got two expressions. I have to have a square root of this number minus square root of that number. Now these are operations. I can't add these two operations because they are not of the same kind. This is 245 and that's 125. So what I would like to do is simplify these thirds so that I have roots that are the same. How am I going to do that? Now 245 and 125 I'm going to uh, prime factorize and uh, 245 prime factorized would be, can a 6 go in yet? No, sorry, a 2 go in there? No. Can a 3 go in there? So how would I know? Well, I add them up together. 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 5 is 11, not divisible by 3. And the next one is 5. So I'm going through my prime numbers and I see 5 can divide in, in there. 5 goes into 24 4 times and 4 remains into 45 9 times. And then 49 I can see is 7 squared. So this simplifies to negative the square root of 7 squared times 5. And now this one you can suspect is also going to have the 5 as not a squared. So for example 125, 125 we know is, well hopefully you know is 5 to the power of 3. So what I'm actually going to do is just write it as 5 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 1. I want something squared so that I can use the square root to simplify. So I've got, um, here I've got 5 squared times 5 and there's the 5 that I need. Now I'm going to uh, uh, distribute, uh, I suppose it's not, it is, it is distribution, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the square root of 7 squared, let me write it out square root of 7 squared times the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 squared times the square root of 5. So this becomes negative 7 square root 5 minus 5 square root 5 because we know that the, the square root of something squared the exponents cancel. Why does it cancel? Let's quickly look at that. 5 square root of 5 to the power of 2 is the same as 5 to the power of a half, the whole thing to the power of 2, we multiply the exponents and we get 5 to the power of 1. So it looks like, it doesn't really, but it looks like the square and the uh, square root cancel one another and that's why these are simplified. Now I've got two expressions. I've got negative 7 square roots of 5 and I've got negative 5 square roots of 5, so in total I have negative 12 square roots of 5, and that is my simplified expression. Let's look at another little bit slightly different example. Okay, this time we have a slightly more complicated expression. We just have a bunch of thirds here, and we've got um, a coefficients to those thirds. And we know that if we're asked to simplify this expression, if it was an algebraic expression, we would have known exactly what to do. Just distribute the coefficient to the bracket. And that's what we are going to do. So we're going to multiply these two. We can multiply the root. Now, whenever we multiply a root, there's a law. When I multiply a surge, I can multiply the interior of that surge. So that this can become the square root of x, y. So here we would have 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 10 is square root of 20. Don't forget the square root. The next one is 3 times 1 is 1, uh, sorry 3. 3 times 14 is the square root of 52. Okay, now we've got a very similar uh, problem than we had before. We want to add these two terms, but we can only add them if they have the same 
um, coefficient, uh, sorry, not coefficient, a uh, uh, third. So let's see if we can simplify it. 20 is, f is 4 times 5, which is 2 square root 5. 2 square, sorry, it's 20 is 2 squared times 5. So if I take the square root of that, the the 2 will simplify, the 2 squared will just simplify to 2 square root 5. So this 2 is multiplying that 15. So square root of 20 becomes 2 square root 5. The 2 multiplies the 15 to give, give me 30 square root of 5 plus 52. If I uh, simplify that one, 52 can be, okay, let's see, 2 can divide in there, that's 26, so 4 can divide in there, so it's 4 times, uh, 4 divides into the 5, 1 times, and into the 12, that remains 3 times, 4 times 13, so this is the square root of 4 times 15, the square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2 square root 13 okay and so the 2 again so this is 2 square root 13 the 2 multiplies the 3 to give me 6 square roots of 13 and I can see well this is the most simplified I can write this expression and I can't add these two as the the, the moment your you have a prime number under your square root you have the simplest form of that third Okay, that's the absolute simplest form you could write it and so this can't be simplified so it's no way to write this expression so that one, both have square root of 5 or both have square root of 13 so this is the most simplified way to write it so it would almost be like having 30x plus 6y I cannot simplify this any further so let's look at one last example so very similar to the previous expression, the way I would handle an expression like this is exactly the same I would handle an algebraic expression. Simply write it out twice and treat that square root of 5 as if it was an x value. Okay, so write it out, uh, treat it as an unknown. The only difference is I can actually multiply and instead of uh, doing the exponents I would rather just multiply the interiors. So what do I mean? Well, I mean we would multiply everything in this bracket with a 2. So I get 4 plus and 2. So I multiplied it with 2. If I multiply this with a 2, it becomes 8 times square root 5. There's nothing here to multiply the square root 5, so only a coefficient gets multiplied. The next one, every everything gets multiplied now with the 4 square root 15. So I get 4 times 2 square root, that gives me 8 square root, not 15, 8 square root 5. And then the last term, this times that would be 4 times 4, which gives me 16 square root 5 times square root 5. That's almost like having, having 5 to the power of a half times 5 to the power of a half. Same basis, we add exponents or same exponents. We multiply bases either way I either get 5 to the power of 1 adding exponents or I get 25 to the power of half which is the same as the square root of 25 which still gives me 5 so whenever I have a root times itself it would end up looking like the roots cancel one another it's the same as what we saw before the square root something squared it looks like the root cancel the square. So again, uh, this would become then square root 5 times the square root 5 would be, I would simplify to simply 5. And now we can just add things that can be added. We can add the 4 and the 16 times 5 is 80. 4, time, 4 plus the 80 is 84. And then these middle two terms, I've got 8 square roots of 5 plus another 8 square roots of 5 which gives me 16 square roots of 5 and this again my third is in a prime number it or at least it is prime factorized it can't factorize any further 
and uh, therefore this is the simplest way I can write the expression. Please, this is not 100 square roots of 5 because the A4 don't have any square roots of 5, so we can't add these two terms. Now, uh, that's this video with some examples of how to simplify these expressions. I hope it was helpful. See you in another video.